Hey guys, thank you for joining us today and welcome to this month's Networking and Education. Uh, today we want to welcome Nick Hayes and Tyler Okerman, um, the risk management consultant with Federated Insurance, who is a huge supporter of PHCC um, and insures many, many, many of our members. Um, so today they're going to talk about fleet management a little bit and, and mitigating your risk in that area. Uh, so welcome, guys. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Um, so my name is Nicholas Hayes. I work with Federated Insurance on our Eastern North Carolina territories. Um, Tyler services our Western North Carolina territories. Um, Tyler's been with us two years now. I'm coming up on a year myself. And today's topic is obviously a repeated topic. We talk about a lot, but it is a major one. Uh, it's risk managing your fleet. Um, so let me share my screen quick. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this presentation comes from our Risk Management Academy. So our Risk Management Academy is a two and a half day uh, academy up in Owatonna, Minnesota, where we allow anybody to come, but we mainly focus on our business owners to come and meet with our heads, all of our, the head of all of our company, our main leadership, our different aspects of the company from underwriters, risk management, marketing reps. So they can learn about all of our different risk management resources, as well as how to protect your business. Um, auto is one of our main topics and that's what we're going to choose today but we wanted to be sure that this is something that if you're interested in is a two and a half day up in minnesota um, i'll also be sharing this with stephanie to pass on to everybody um, you can register for this these are the dates we have currently in the calendar contractor specific will be um, in april from 25th to 27th we have petroleum marketers, all other industries, petroleum marketers, auto dealers, and all industries. And this is something that if you are interested in, feel free to um, reach out to me or Tyler. Or if you want to learn more information, we can definitely talk about this more in a second. So now we want to jump into the presentation of risk managing your fleet. Um, Tyler, should show up for you? Yes, sir. Looks good. Um, so first and foremost, Let's talk about why we are talking about driving. So why driving? Um, you want to focus on your behaviors. Um, what are the strategies? So the what, the why, and the how. And then what conclusion and takeaways. So Tyler, um, why do we talk about driving so much? Well, uh, the, the deal is, is that this is, this is an exposure that every single client from from contractors to petroleum to uh, even reach, I mean, everybody experiences the driving exposure. You, you have your fleet, um, whether it's a small fleet, whether it's one or two vehicles, to maybe just an owner um, with one other employee or some of those with larger fleets, upwards of 200, 300 vehicles. Um, th this is something that everybody experiences. Now, um, the reason that's so important is because just from the legal standpoint, I mean, even if we would just look at it from that, um, everything's going to court now. I, I think we can all agree. And I think we're all kind of familiar with how the legal landscape is now. Um, every claim, every accident, it's going to litigation. Um, there's some attorney getting their hands on it and they're looking at everything and they're taking a deep dive into everything that, uh, that went into the wreck. So, uh, which we'll talk about today. Um, another aspect, you know, just kind of as we talk about the, the cost of all this, not only the litigation and legal aspect, but social inflation. I know it's a term we, we use a lot and not everybody's necessarily familiar with it, but essentially what it boils down to is when these do, when these, when these wrecks and these, these cases, they go to trial, um, the, the, um, the juries are handing out these massive penalties to, 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 to businesses um, where they're, they're coming out with verdicts of uh, uh, in the millions. Um, really, really heavy handed tactics uh, for a number of different reasons that we can talk about. Um, but also, uh, like you can see here, the human element, you cannot, I mean, we can talk about cost, we can talk about litigation all day, but you cannot put a price on your employee's life and their safety, uh, as well as the, the safety of your business. So there, there's just so much that goes into this. And this is why it's so important. Um, and this is why we talk about it all the time, because it really is one of the most important things we'll ever talk about. 
Absolutely. And to kind of build on what Tyler talked about with social inflation, these are the different topics as to why we are seeing these increases in auto losses. Um, first and foremost, it's the big bad company and their lawyers versus the individual. Um, third party litigation funding. If you're not familiar with what this is, this is where there are people who invest in litigation where they put money into a lawyer or whatever association to pay and fund for these litigations to and what that does is it drives up the cost because these people investing in these litigations get a payout that's another thing we're seeing increasing of um psychological tactics you know people or juries are ready to accept these extreme values they hear these numbers they hear these million dollar claims and they're just like oh well, that's a generally accepted commotion and advertising I know you see it. I know we see it. I know your drivers see it. Lawyers and personal injury attorneys advertise nonstop. And the way states are going, more advertising is allowed. Um, and plus, these are a bunch of other different types of social inflation causes, things that just cause the cost to go up. Um, to build off the social inflation, here's some data. So, from the American Transportation Research Institute, they did a study from 2005 to 2019 to provide you with what claims are looking like. So from 2005 to 2011, they found that about 80 cases of settlements or verdicts along auto incidents for companies versus individuals, about 80 cases were a million dollars or more. Um, from 2012 to 2019, that increased by 235 percent. Yeah, that's that's a massive jump, and this is just part of the thing we talk about. And obviously, as these numbers become more common, these high nuclear verdicts, or what we refer to as verdicts of 10 million dollars plus, are becoming more common. They're not this rare occurrence that the worst case scenario. The worst case things to happen happen and the jurors provide them with these massive losses it is becoming a more common occurrence um, so what can we do about it Tyler, what do you think business owners can do about it well i'll tell you you know one of the most important things i think that we need to address today and we'll address a bunch of different topics thanks to nicholas but um i'll tell you leadership right um strong leadership uh, top-down management where uh, leaders, business leaders, owners, they are living it, uh, they're, they're, they're breathing it, living it, breathing it, and doing it. Um, that's, that's a big, that's a huge portion. And so much of that, so much of what we'll talk about basically back ends off of that. Um, so definitely strong leadership is, is a critical piece of this tool. Um, you know, the, uh, the culture of safety and risk management, you know, like we're talking about that strong leadership. So creating that culture, um, getting your team to buy in, right? You know, whether you've got one employee or a hundred employees or a thousand, getting your people to buy into your culture, um, who you're about, right? Your safety, your risk management, and also, you know, your other values that you hold as a company, getting your people to buy in is, is a big, big piece of this, um, which of course then you're going to get that change in behavior practices, right? So implementing those policies and procedures, putting that risk management in place, um, that's how you're going to get that, that change in your culture. Um, I know Nicholas is going to talk about this a little bit, but your practices and your tech, right? So policies, we're talking about that, but also having tech in your vehicles. Um, and then, of course, you know, while we're here today, right, the power of your association, the power of your association to educate uh, lawmakers and uh, lobby for that tort reform. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there, like Tyler said, being a leader is the number one thing. You've got to take the ability as your business owner to show your employees what your expectations are. You know, you're creating a culture you're using proven practices and tech technologies like driving policies, driver training. You know, do you run an MVR? Do you know what your drivers are doing? Do you use technology? Do you have drug testing practices? Do you have hiring practices that you hold everybody accountable to? These are things that as a business owner help protect you, your business and your employees. Um, so obviously we're going to talk about strategies for improving behavior. The number one thing is to change driver behavior. Now to change driver behavior, there are many ways to do it, but the three 
main topics are communication, your emotional appeal, and your monitoring. And we're going to kind of break that down a little bit here. So first and foremost, are you communicating with your drivers? Are you educating them? So when you hire a driver, do you let them know what your expectations are? Are your expectations absolutely clear and pointed? And do you have standards, such as a driving policy, such as their motor vehicle report requirements? Are you training your drivers? You know, that's something everybody needs. Training is something that comes along every day. You know, some days it's a repeat. Some days it's not a repeat. You might be repeating the same topic over and over again. Um, how aware are your drivers? Uh, you know, everybody hears the term out of sight, out of mind. But if you're not putting that in front of them, are they thinking about it? And are you bringing it to their attention? And some of the ways to improve the education and training and awareness of your drivers is having a formal driving policy. So this right here is a that you see on the screen. This is a sample policy that we provide to federated clients. Um, it outlines what the education requirements are, what the training requirements are. You know, with this driving policy, it gives you your driving standards. It's like, hey, as a driver, you're not allowed, you're supposed to follow all state laws. As a driver, we have mobile device usage. You know, you're supposed to be hands free or you're supposed to be completely mobile device free. You know, another thing with the driving policy is, are you reviewing it? We've seen, and there are many times where we've seen that people will implement a driving policy and that's it. That's really about it. And let's say an auto accident happens and in litigation or in um, a trial, they'll bring it up. They'll bring up this driving policy and they'll ask, hey, what does your driving policy say? Oh, well, I think it says uh, we're only allowed to use hands free when your driving policy clearly says that you have a mobile device ban. So, you know, to be sure that you are reviewing and that you're updating your driving policies and updating your expectations as necessary. Next thing, performance review. Do you review your drivers? Do you review what your standards are? Are there certain things that you think you need to improve on your driving policy? And finally, violation notices, you know, are you holding your drivers accountable? When you get a complaint on the road, when you see that they're speeding, when you've got some technology that tells you, hey, this is how this driver is performing. This driver, you know, I need to talk to him. So are you sitting down and are you documenting it? Are you maintaining an employee file of their driving behaviors? These are different layers to a driving policy. Um, some other things with communication and driving policy is mobile devices. Mobile devices are long-term goal in federated professional opinion is to completely ban mobile devices and the use of vehicles. Um, mobile devices are obviously a distracted driving. They are a main contributing factor to all all auto incidences. Um, distracted driving is uh, the number one cause of auto incidences. You know, plus if you do this, it's a great way to help protect the company. If you've set the standard to let your drivers know that distracted driving is unacceptable, that mobile devices are unacceptable. Well, therefore, you've taken another distraction out of your driver's hands. Plus, do you have a way to develop a system to monitor for compliance? Um, you know, are you using a GPS system? Are you using a telematic system? Are you doing reviews? Are you letting all of your drivers know it's like, hey, we are taking over what we are doing? Next is the emotional appeal. Tyler, why is emotional appeal so important? Well, what it boils down to Real quick, I just want to kind of touch on the mobile device ban. I, I want everybody here who's listening to this, um, just get real comfortable with the with the myth of multitasking. Um, the human brain is not designed and not wired to, to multitask. It's designed to focus on one task at a time and do that job thoroughly. Um, so th there's really no such thing as multitasking, and I think we've been able to prove that. And so this is why this mobile device ban is just so crucial. Really, any technology in the car, I mean, there's going to be dispatching tools, there's going to be call management tools, um, but really limiting the distractions in the vehicle 
is, is so crucial and so critical because our, our brains are just built to focus on one thing. So, you know, we, I just want everybody, if you, if you haven't done any of that or any of that research, just make sure you get familiar with that because um, that's definitely something that's coming up more and more. Um, but as far as the emotional appeal goes, you know, this is such a huge part of what makes this effective. You can put tech down in a car, you can roll out the policy, and those are massive pieces of this puzzle. Um, but that last piece, that emotional appeal where you're getting your employees to buy in, right? Uh, you're letting them know why this is important, sharing stories, uh, playing videos, you know, going over real world examples, um, you know, really getting your employees and, and business owners as well to share, um, to, to really get that buy-in, that emotional buy-in. Because I'll tell you something, um, this is what juries are doing, right? When we talk about litigation verdicts, you know, that's they're using the emotional appeal to, to get juries on their side. So beat them to the punch and be proactive and get your employees to buy in and, and be on your side before something like this ever happens. That, that proactivity is crucial. So getting input from employees, really getting them to, to understand why this is so important for them, but also for the business, um, holding those driver's meetings, that coaching, um, and then, you know, that family communication. Uh, this is something we don't talk about and we probably should talk about it more. Um, but for those employees and business owners that have wives, husbands, um, children, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, aunts, everybody, everybody's got family. And, and we all know that if we're injured or hurt, uh, we're going to have family that relies on us and that's going to miss us if we're not around. So again, going to that emotional appeal and getting that buy-in from your folks is, is such a critical piece of this. Um, you can see over here too, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which, uh, you know, there's, there's some, there's some million dollar ideas in there, but, uh, you know, really helping your employees achieve their, their highest level of, of goal, getting that self-actualization. This is where it starts, right? You know, you, you put the technology, you put the policies in place. Um, so now you get them to buy in. So yeah, this is, this is a huge part of it. And another thing with emotional appeal, studies have been done that when you ask input of your drivers, when you bring them in, it is shown that when people can decide for themselves, or come to their own conclusion that this benefits them, their buy-in increases by thousands of percent. It's, it's insane. When you put the responsibility on somebody and you get them involved and they feel like they're heard and they feel like they listen to and they feel like you understand, they buy in. And as a business owner, that's the best thing you could ask for when your company buys into what you know you believe in and they see it and they understand it you've met that emotional appeal. You've hit the biggest, the biggest point. The emotional appeal is probably the largest hump to get over because you have to connect with your people and they have to understand. And when they do understand, just the results are astounding. Next, we talk about monitoring. So monitoring comes in many different shapes and sizes. So one, do you have frontline supervisors? They are going to manage the front line of your employees. If you're a frontline supervisor, that's absolutely you. They're the ones who do the direct communicating with your employees. They see them day to day. They're the face of what's going on. Another thing with monitoring is accountability. When you are monitoring your employees in any way, shape or form, are you holding your employees accountable? Are there real consequences for their actions? You know, a good example is their performance. So let's say you have an employee who's underperforming on jobs, who is not meeting the requirements, who is doing poor work. Are there consequences? And those same things turn over to driving. They turn over to your exposure as a business owner. And with accountability, are you consistent? Because if you're not consistent, it's not going to be an effective program. You know, how good is a hammer when you're using a screw to nail in a nail? Um, the next thing with monitoring is recognition. When you recognize your employees, especially when they put input, you give them positive feedback. You give them absolutely fantastic, you know, a good pat on the back. You'd be surprised what uh, a $5 breakfast sandwich will do to an employee's attitude toward the job. Are you positively recognizing your employees? But the big thing when you've got your emotional appeal, your why and the what, the self-correction does itself. When your employees are bought into what you're showing, 
the self-correction will be the final result that they will work on themselves that they will absolutely be there you know they'll see oh oh i'm monitoring myself i see i've got this problem driving i need to fix it or oh i'm doing this work wrong i need to ask for help when you've got your employees bought in self-correction is the ultimate goal that's where you've got it when you set up your culture oh go ahead was, was there a question okay um and that's where it comes from so when you set up your culture as a business owner your culture will decide how your employees self-correct the final thing we know we want to talk about is dealing with your employees is your technologies so tyler kind of touched on this earlier but there are thousands of technologies across the board for managing your employees for monitoring your employees um, we are focusing on your vehicles, on your fleets, on what protects you and your business on the road. So I know a lot of companies already have these, but GPS technologies. So there are hundreds of them. There's so many vendors. Um, some of the more popular ones I've seen in North Carolina have been Verizon Connect, uh, Lytics, and Samsara. Um, Tyler, have you seen any other ones that you think are prominent? I've run into a few smaller ones. There's one Zuby that I ran into the other day, but yeah, um, there, there are just so many out there. There's a lot of different choices. And the way these GPS systems works is obviously they'll do live tracking on your vehicles. They'll let business owners know how their drivers are performing. Are they speeding? Are they, you know, working on harsh acceleration? Are they where they're supposed to be? Um, another thing with GPS or telematics. Telematics is a similar system to where it is a mobile device based. So you will see this with um, one of the things that I've seen that's most popular, especially with you know family individuals, business owners have this on their family is Life360. Um, it is a phone app that pretty much its location and works on driving. Um, but telematics is one where as mobile devices become more prominent in this day and age and mobile devices become a day-to-day -day necessity for your employees to do their jobs, um, it is something that becomes another tool. Um, you know, one of the things I really like to share in regards to, to tech um, and, and how it pertains to being proactive and, and accountability for your employees. If you bought a Ford or a Chevy in the past 10 years, your vehicle's being tracked by Ford or Chevy and an attorney is gonna get their hands on that telematics data, your, your vehicle's location. It's all talking to Chevy and Ford. So you're already doing it for free, whether you know it or not. So why not have tech and put the power in your hands to a point where you are able to monitor it and be proactive about it before it ever gets to that point. Um, and, and accountability, that's a big piece of the puzzle. I'll tell you, um, after a long, long time in law enforcement, making the career switch here, but I, I share it all the time, which is, you know, you're responsible for every action you take, whether you're a, a frontline employee, uh, a supervisor, um, an owner or anything like that, you know, every, everything you do and every action has a consequence. So whether it's driving or, you know, you're a service tech or your installation tech or anything like that, um, you know, everything you do is gonna, your work's going to be looked at. So personal accountability is definitely the name of the game. I, I can't stress that enough. Absolutely, Tyler. And the other last technology we like to talk about are dash cameras. Um, I know dash cameras are a very hit or miss topic, but the fact behind a dash camera is right, wrong, or indifferent. It has recorded the story. Regardless of what happened, there is an actual physical recording of the incident that happened. Whether your driver's at fault, your driver's not at fault, they were doing something they weren't supposed to, it tells you the story. And there are all sorts of dash cameras. There are some just, just record videos, some that pair up with GPS systems like Samsara, Linux, and Verizon Connect which give in-cab alerts, which have coaching and utilization tools. These things are absolutely fantastic. They absolutely save people all the time. Um, you can go on YouTube and see hours upon hours upon hours of just dash camera footage. Um, if, you're not a, if you're a business owner and you're not using a technology to help protect your fleet, you're falling behind the times. Um, you're falling behind the potential to protect your business, to protect yourself, your employees, to keep those you know, nuclear verdicts we talk about at bay. These are things that are absolutely necessary, especially with how the social inflation climate is moving. 
Um, but next we're gonna get on to, do we have a long-term solution for the distracted driving epidemic? So we, I know we've talked about technologies. Um, we're going to talk about a federated specific technology that is very similar to a lot of these GPS telematic systems. Um, so obviously cell phones are the big problem. I mean, today on my drive to the office, I think I saw, gosh, who knows, 50 plus vehicles where people were texting on their phones or they were talking on their phone or they were driving and distracted. And what was awful was about 15 of those vehicles were company vehicles where there is a logo on the side of that vehicle and that driver had a phone in their hand or they had it on their ear talking. But we want to use cell phones to fight the problem and protect, obviously protect Federated's clients. And these are things that if you are not a Federated client and have questions about, feel free to ask us. Um, there are hundreds of technologies out there. But we're going to talk about ours and definitely we're going to throw you some numbers and these numbers are usable across all industries. They're usable across all technologies. Um, we talk about ours because we know it. We know what the data shows on our systems and for a lot of other systems, the data will be similar, um, but we're going to talk about ours. Let's see. Tyler, would you like to give a quick introduction to what Federated Drive Safe is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is this is sort of the latest and greatest. This is something that we've been working on for for a while, um, because we, I mean, this is what Federated does best. This is we we look at industry analytics, we see what's coming down the pipe, and so we really kind of again, just like we're talking about today, we really proactively address these issues. Um, so telematics, you know, it, it's one of these things. It's it's an app on the phone um, that pairs with a little bit of tech in the car. Uh, but what it does is it measures uh, some some fi five telematics that we know um, really uh, are, are consistent across Rex across the board. Uh, but what the tool does, it, it's the app on the phone that allows drivers to sort of practice. Um, I mean, it, it's a motivation tool. Um, and it's also a knowledge and awareness tool. So, you know, like we're talking about with the tech, you know, we, we want to talk about accountability and we want to talk about proactivity. Well, this is it right here. Um, your, your drivers have the power in their hands. They, they get live feedback on their driving habits, speeding, harsh braking, cornering, acceleration, and mobile phone use. Um, because so many technologies that we're talking about, they just don't track phone use. There's just no way. Unless you have a driver facing camera that's watching your driver's eyeballs, so many of these like Verizon and all these other ones just don't have that ability to monitor phone use, which is the killer. That's what we're talking about. Um, so this app, you know, it gives your drivers live feedback uh, the, the awareness portion of it. Um, I guess let's just talk a little bit about exactly what the app provides. So your drivers are going to have access to their, their, their exact habits. So all their trips that they're taking, they're going to be able to look at their trips. They're going to be able to watch what they did on those trips. It's going to give them live feedback on events, anything that they fell short on or did really well. It's going to give them immediate feedback. They get a score, right? So they're going to get a score from anywhere from zero to a hundred. Uh, based on their drive and, and that's a that's a tallying score so it's not per trip you're you know you'll get a, a score per trip but you're also going to get a, an overall two-week score as well um, it's a great it, you can see here it's a it's a gamification tool um, a lot of younger drivers are on the road a lot of them are on their phones they're playing apps all these apps have a badge a reward that sort of gratification saying well I did a good job how am I being recognized for it where there's there's live feedback on there for your points and your badges um, but really that accountability. So I can look at my phone. I have it in my car and I can look at my phone and say, well, I had a really piss poor trip. I, I did not do a good job. I can look at that and go, okay, this is where I fell short on this drive. Uh, I can do better next time. Or if I'm having a really great week, I can look at it and go, oh my gosh, I've gotten hundreds all week. How great am I? So, um, being able to review that data on your phone in real time is such a big portion of why we are so adamant about why this telematics tool, the drive safe telematics is such an important piece of the puzzle and, and uh, the offering that we have for, for clients. So to talk a little bit about how it works. So the way it works is everybody has an app on their phone and it pairs with a tag. It's a tag we stick in every vehicle. The tag is the identifying vehicle. Um, 
once it's there, it provides data only if they're being used in a trip. So that we, we created it that way because we wanted employees to be certain that we are not tracking their personal use. We're tracking the vehicles, we're protecting the company. And that's why we designed it the way it is. Um, to talk about what it is and isn't, first and foremost, it's not dash cams. This isn't a compliance log. This isn't real-time fleet tracking. Um, it's not a full fleet management system and it's definitely not a rate determination. Um, we get these questions a lot. Um, this is a very focused on your driver. This is a driver's risk management tool. That's what it was designed for because that's your most important people. Now we understand um, a lot of people use the GPS and fleet management systems to you know, maintain maintenance of their vehicles, maintain active locations of the vehicles. And that is absolutely great. We love those systems. Um, and that's why we designed ours this way. We didn't want to take away from those other systems. We just wanted to add to it. We wanted to add to it a personal touch that those three things we talked about earlier, communication, emotional, and monitoring. You know, this plays to that emotional aspect. It gives your driver the power to decide themselves. You know, when you are bought in as a business owner on your safe practices, this is another one. It's like, hey, we want to use this. And it's funny. I, we go to talk about this. Um, good example is earlier this week, I went and met with a, a new insured and we put it in 30 vehicles and 30 drivers. And, you know, I got to honestly say a lot of them were very, you know, hesitant on it. They were worried about, you know, us tracking them, us doing all this other things. Well, yesterday the business owner called me. He said, I've never heard these guys talk about driving safe so much. I've never heard these guys. I mean, they're just ragging on each other. It's like, man, I don't know how you, you've got below a 90. Um, shoot, it's funny. Their, their fleet manager is maintaining the perfect score right now. He's got a perfect 100. He loves it. It's something that we, it's not something we expected up front, but the way people take to it when you show you are bought in. Yeah, that's, um, you know, you, you've all got your Batman belts, and we want this to be another tool uh, in your Batman belt to be able to. To, to help out. And here are some stats. So what we've seen from our system itself, and I'm pretty sure this goes over to a lot of other systems, um, the top 30% of your drivers improved their behavior in 30 days. So you've got a 30% reduction in speeding, a 39% reduction in phone distraction. That's, that's a huge number. And a 51% reduction in heartbreaking. So those last two numbers come hand in hand because the majority of the auto claims we will see is rear end collisions. That's the majority of the ones I see, Tyler. I don't know if that's what you see across our across the board. I'll tell you, uh, after the, the, the time I had the, over a decade in law enforcement, I'll tell you, heartbreaking rear end collisions. That's where the wrecks are happening. That's where a lot of property damage is coming from. And, and, and personal injury, yeah. The, the reduction in phone usage, we think absolutely correlates with the reduction in heartbreaking. People are paying attention. They're looking at the road. They're not distracted. You know, you know, we, we'd absolutely understand that you have good drivers, but we want to make them great drivers because when we make them great drivers, not only do we protect them, but we protect the business. We protect every driver in your fleet. Um, here's some other data. So over the course of half a month, this was a company's average score. They sat around right at the beginning eh, around 87 got up and then they just consistently went up for the next 15 days. That's outstanding. That's what we like to see. And that's what we see with a lot of clients. You know, they come in, it's like, oh, our drivers are great. Are great. And their first score is like, oh, wow, we're an average of 75. What are we doing? And when you get that buy-in, your score goes up and up and up. You know, and you get a weekly summary. So this is something that with this system, you get a weekly update of how your scores increase. Um, tell me. Well, I was just going to say to your point, which is say, saying I'm a great driver is such a subjective thing. We, I think maybe, I mean, those of us that are more critical of ourselves or, or at least look maybe a little more realistic, because I'll tell you, even after a decade of, of driving around and teaching driver's training, I still was the best driver. Um, it, this gives you an objective tool, right? This puts a number to it. So you can, I can tell you I'm a great driver, but how do I show you I'm a great driver? By putting a number to it. So absolutely, this is, this is the, the easiest way to say that. And obviously, just like this with everything else, we want to prevent injuries and save lives. This is a tool that we wholeheartedly believe in. 
and there are other tools that we will absolutely we, we back up. So Lytics is our main partner. Um, we understand there are some complications with Lytics, but systems like that that have a full fleet management system that give your drivers feedback that tell you how your drivers are driving and hold you and your drivers accountable absolutely prevent injuries and save lives. And when doing stuff like that, we protect businesses, vehicle crashes, employee turnover, downtime, social inflation, reputate, all these things that come into play when you have your drivers and you as a business owner are bought in to changing your culture. You know, first and foremost, do you see your business growing? Do you want to pass your business on? Or, hey, you're coming up to a time when you're ready to get out of the industry and you're ready to let go of it. Do you have a successful business to turn over to somebody? And most importantly, are you protecting your people? These employees have families. A lot of you guys are very prominent in the communities you're in. You know, this is a, a big deal. Um, with social inflation, the way things go, one auto accident can ruin a reputation of a business regardless of how great your service is. Um, an auto accident can just tarnish any reputation. I just, I, and this, this isn't necessarily, this is more of a rhetorical question for the room. Um, but for those of you that have had to ever tell a family member or someone that, um, that someone isn't coming home or someone isn't going to make it, the, the impact on you as a business owner, as a, as a supervisor, um, on that family, there is no dollar amount that you can put to that. You, you, you could, you could try to put a number on it and say, well, it's worth X amount of trillion dollars or whatever the case may be. Um, but to have to tell someone that you didn't do everything that you could have done to protect your, your employee, your, whatever the case is, uh, someone else on the road, another driver, um, there, there, there's no dollar amount that you can put to that. So that's why this is so important. That's why we, we preach it from the rooftops every day. But again, just like we talked about, drove, uh, went too far. Drives a universal risk and there's a giant human element to it. And as a business owner, it's your responsibility to take the role of the leadership position and change the behaviors. And when you do that, you not only help your business, but you help your people, you help their families, you help the community, and you become the top notch in what you're doing. Um, Tyler, do you have anything else? No, no, I just know there was a question in the chat and I didn't want to miss it before I- All right, there's a question in the chat. I, I don't, it does not popping up on my screen. It says, does it, it, does it work off either? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was it then. Um, yeah, no, this, um, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to, speaking of being bad at using tech. Uh, so no, so what you want to do, so the, the, the app works off of, um, the gyroscopic motion in a device. So if you have a cell phone or an iPad that does have a gyroscope in it, um, it will work. It needs to be able to measure that movement, basically picking up the phone, moving the phone around, manipulating it, um, that hard breaking the heart. So, so it's gotta be able to have cell data, it's got to be able to have some sort of like mobile data and that gyroscope in the phone. So that's a, that's a big part of the tech is having access to that in the, in the app. Um, no, I, I, I just want to, I, I guess I just to, to, to piggyback off your wrap up, Nicholas, um, you all know what's at stake. Um, I, I don't think there's anybody listening to this and who's going to watch this that doesn't know why this is important and, and what's at stake. So really what it boils down to is, you know, what are you going to do about it, right? Um, driver safety training, monitoring a motor vehicle record, um, having a company policy, personal accountability, as well as management accountability uh, from the top down and from the bottom up, right? Having that open communication between your staff, putting technology in a car. There are so many pieces of this puzzle that go into that that overall goal of risk management and safety for your company so you know again we we know why this is important we get it so you know we want to start taking those next steps as as from from federated standpoint and just a general just as a human being just being good human beings just making sure we keep each other and our and our employees and each other safe well we do appreciate y'all's time